Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is time for reflection, and our time for reflection leader today is Dr. Maureen Sire, Director of Interface Scotland. Dr. Sire. Thank you. Presiding Officer, Members of the Scottish Parliament, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today on behalf of Interface Scotland and the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust. Today is the 17th of January. It was on the 17th of January, 1945, that SS units began the final evacuation of prisoners from Auschwitz, marching them in foot away from the camps. These death marches caused thousands to perish. SS guards shot anyone who fell behind. Prisoners suffered from starvation and exposure. It's hard for us to imagine what was endured in the depth of winter 72 years ago today. Next week, Scotland will remember the Holocaust and subsequent genocides. Speaking at the National Memorial event in Bishop Briggs Academy will be daughter of Holocaust survivor Saskia Tepe and survivor of the Rwandan genocide, Omotesi Stewart. The theme this year is how can life go on? A question that survivors must ask themselves. It's a question that we in Scotland must also ask ourselves when we consider the asylum seekers who arrive in our country, many having already suffered war, deprivation and trauma. Just how can life go on when any sense of normality is removed? Holocaust survivor Ellie Weissel said, for the survivor, death is not the problem. Death was an everyday occurrence. We learned to live with death. The problem is to adjust to life, to living. I've often thought how difficult it must be to adjust to life after devastating trauma. My own mother-in-law struggled to adjust to life after being sent on the kinder transport to the UK and then learning that her parents had been killed in Hitler's gas chambers. Later, unable to adjust to family life, she walked out on her children while they were still infants. And it was only at her funeral 12 years later that the children actually learned they were Jewish. Living on can be a struggle that impacts on future generations. And what does this mean for all of us? How do we help individuals, families and communities live on in the aftermath of terror and displacement? Scotland is home to many who are living on, away from their homeland, sometimes facing discrimination, and always living with memories and loss. It's easy for us to feel overwhelmed with the magnitude of suffering and become paralyzed by it. But I have read stories of how small acts of kindness during the Holocaust gave someone the will to live on. And I have witnessed asylum seekers weep at a kindly gesture. Never underestimate the power of simply being kind. I'd like to end with an adapted poem by Naomi Nye. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the refugee lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing, you must also know sorrow. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to mail letters and purchase bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crown of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. Thank you.